Okay, welcome back to Approximation and Stability. Uh, I think we have now safely arrived in Chapter 3. And after checking that uniform convergence is great when you want to approximate your operator and its inverse, we realize that, however, it is not realistic to always assume uniform convergence, at least if you want to work numerically on a computer, so that you have to work with something weaker than that, and this is strong or also known, also known as pointwise convergence. And in contrast to the two arrows that we usually make for uniform convergence, we denote the strong convergence by just one arrow. And the important message is on the positive side that it is weak enough that we can approximate invertible and hence not compact operators by operators of finite rank. So I'm sure you remember this little diagram that we always draw, which was saying that all the inverse operators are non-compact, so they are outside of K xy and kxy is closed with respect to uniform convergence so you cannot go through this boundary via uniform convergence however the operators you want to work with are of finite rank because you want to store them in your computer and that way you can see that there is no way through from here to over here in fact, this morning I got a much nicer version of this diagram from one of you guys. Let me show you that one. So how cool is this one? Okay, and the good news is that using strong convergence, which is a lot weaker than uniform convergence, we can pass through this barrier here. Um, okay, so this was our aim and we can Tick this box. On the downside, of course, the connection between the operator A and its approximants AN is not as strong anymore as it used to be when this was uniform convergence. And hence, we might not be able to prove the same theorem that we proved last week for applicability and stability of this sequence versus invertibility of A. Um, okay, so this is the new question here. Let me start it with a minus because it's not going to get any better than last week. Okay, so here it is. The question is whether strong convergence is strong enough that also the inverses of our approximants will exist and converge to the inverse of A, which will of course lead to the solutions of these equations that are connected to A n will exist and converge to the solution of our equation A x equals B. And let me already give you the answer. And the answer is sometimes yes, sometimes no, which is obviously not, not what you want to hear as a mathematician or someone applying mathematics. Um, which means, well, we need to understand this theory better. We need theorems, we need classes of operators for which we can guarantee that the answer is yes and others that we will hopefully never need in applications. Okay, and that's where the story starts. So let us start with a definition here. We will say that our operator sequence AN is called an approximation method for the operator A. So here's a new phrase. If our sequence AN converges strongly to A. Okay, and of course this definition is just emphasizing that this is the convergence we're gonna work with when we say approximation. Okay, and to get everything going, Let's write down the equations again. We want to solve the equation AX equals B by instead solving a whole sequence of simpler equations. 
and let me label them by one and two. And assuming we have invertibility, we can write the solutions in terms of the inverses. And now the new thing is that our approximating operators a n go strongly to a. The right hand side still converge in the norm of the space y. And well, we also have this here. And the question is always the same, will these xn here also be uniquely determined and will they converge to x? And just like we saw last week, it all comes down to the question whether or not these inverses here converge and are indeed strongly is enough to the inverse of a. If that happens for every right hand side b, and for every sequence of right hand sides bn that converges to b, and if we can invert the equation at least for sufficiently large n, then this is exactly what we call applicability of this operator sequence, or now we will say of this approximation method. Um, do you see the same problem that I see? Uh, on the one hand, we say that we take strong convergence here so that we can approximate the invertible A by finite rank ANs. On the other hand, we talk about inverses here, which we all know do not exist for compact, let alone finite rank operators. Let's recall our little diagram. If AN is in here, then it cannot be invertible. And the way to solve this problem is that our operators AN have to be understood as operators not from x to y, because then it couldn't be invertible, but instead from some subspace xn to some subspace yn. And if these spaces here are finite dimensional, then n of the same dimension, then an can be identified with a finite matrix and of course um, has a good chance to be invertible. Okay, let's write that here again for completeness. And of course, this is bringing some new questions with it. First question, how do we choose these spaces xn and yn between which an is acting? And second question, how do we understand this convergence an strongly to a if an is not even acting on the same spaces as a is? I mean, of course, we could write down what strong convergence means. And then you have to say for all x's in. OK, but that's the question, because um, an is expecting completely different x's than a is expecting. OK, and uh, well, maybe something that makes a lot of sense for question one is to choose the spaces xn, so they are contained in one another, and the same with yn, but still, um, well, it's not clear how to choose them exactly. 